Hi, I'm Dr. Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to this section on problem solving techniques. In this lesson, we're going to learn about project network diagrams. So our objectives for this lesson are as follows. At the end of the lesson, we should be able to do the following. First, use a project network diagram to show the sequence of activities in a project. We're going to use the activity on arrow method to draw a project network diagram. It's a nice simple method. We're going to use a project network diagram to identify the path in a project. And finally, you should be able to use this type of diagram to estimate the duration of a project. So project network diagrams are part of our resource planning section in our curriculum. And in this section, there are three techniques that we're going to cover. And project network diagrams uh, are the first of these three techniques. So let's always in our lesson start off with an inspirational quote. And this one comes from Daniel B. Meyer, who is uh, responsible for producing the Illinois Construction Law book. And in this book, he says, a project without a critical path is like a ship without a rudder. So we need uh, to do things like identify paths through projects. And something like the critical path can be a very, very useful problem solving technique to help us uh, uh, improve processes. So let's go ahead and see what we mean by this. So first of all, what is a project network diagram? Now, I've drawn one here on the right-hand side, and it looks a little bit complicated if you haven't seen one of these before. But bear with me as I'll, I'll try and build this up and show you how these diagrams work. First of all, a project network diagram like this, it's a technique for showing activity sequencing. So you can see, actually, that there's arrows all pointing to the right, indicating a sequence of activities. The, in this case here, the activities are end, uh, indicated by letters of the alphabet. So of activity A, activity B, activity C, activity D, and so on. So it gives us a display of the logical relationships among our sequencing of project activity. So this can be very, very useful, particularly if something's going wrong or we're not unsure uh, how things are working, or we're looking for ways of improving things by perhaps reducing the number of activities. So we need to understand what the activities are in the first place. So this gives us a graphical representation of what I'm talking about here, which is the logical relationship and sequencing of activities that make up the project. It's useful for planning, tracking, and controlling projects right from the beginning to the end, and it's most popular tool used by project managers. So they will, uh, project managers will have um, activity sequencing and use these types of diagrams for estimating duration of tasks, which in turn will lead to the estimate of the duration of a whole project. So very important part of time management, uh, but we'll find it useful here as an interesting problem solving technique. So when should we use a project network diagram? Well, there's many times that we can use it, but it's primarily used to plan, schedule, and control a new program or a new product development effort, NPD. It also helps us to document and track a complex project, whether it's existing or planned. Uh, so, so quite often, if you're looking at improving a process, uh, it might be useful to look back on old, older project network diagrams for the process, if they exist, and use them to help your problem-solving um, situation. We can also use a project network diagram to designate a critical path, as I've mentioned previously, and show other interrelationships. So that's going to be important. And finally here, we're going to use project network diagrams to ensure time and resource management and to reduce project costs through uh, coordination and communication. So as you can see, it could be quite useful to us for problem solving. So how do we draw a project network diagram? So we're going to use here a very simple method called the activity on arrow method, AOA for short. Um, there are other methods, but we just concentrate on this method here. Only two symbols are required in the activity on arrow method. We need an arrow to represent an activity. So in my diagram here, I've got an arrow to represent activity A. So see, you can see here why we call it an activity on arrow method. And the other um, symbol that you need is a circle, or a no as we call them, a node. And these represent an event. And there's two types of events in a project network diagram. Then node number one represents the start of an activity, which is A. And number, node number two indicates the end of that activity. So there's only these types to draw a project network diagram. So you can see that it is a fairly straightforward uh, number of, of, of uh, items to use. So let's go then and uh, see how we build up a project network diagram. We start off um, by, step by step by finding all the activities that start at node number one. So I place node number one in my diagram here in the yellow circle. And then I can see in this instance here that I've got two activities that start at this. So both activities A and B can start at the same time. Activity A ends at node number two. Activity B ends at node number three. We draw the finished nodes as we can see here and the arrows between them uh, the, 
1 and 2 for activity A and 1 and 3 for activity B. We put the letter of activity, our name, and duration estimate on the associated arrow. So here I've got activity A, which is, let's say it's four days long, and um, activity B is three days long. So we put that information on the diagram. And then we continue drawing the network diagram, working from left to right. We look for bursts and merges. We've got one burst here in this diagram. We can see that activities C and D, uh, the burst occurs when a single node is followed by two or more activities. So we've got two activities here, C and D, uh, coming out of node number two. So both start at the same, at the same node number two. Activity C is complete uh, at number, node number four, and activity D is complete at node number five. A merge occurs when two or more uh, nodes precede a single node. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that might look at. We can see here, and this one here, now the, uh, the diagram is finished, that we've got three activities, F, G, and H, and these are all merging at node 7. So they all finish at the, they all have the same event. So we continue drawing our project network diagram on until all activities are included on the diagram that have dependencies. So we can see each of these activities here can only start when the previous activity is complete. So for example, activity E, which is two days long, can only start when activity B is finished. And we only put in the dependency, the previous dependency. Our rule of thumb here is that all arrowheads should face towards the right and no arrows should cross on a network diagram. And in fact, if you do a project network diagram using the activity and arrow method, you should not have any arrows crossing. If you end up having, it's likely there's possible error in your chart. So do check this uh, sequencing uh, information. Now, uh, these give, the, um, just go back here a second, we can see that we have several numbers on our arrows indicating the duration. And so how do we estimate these? Uh, so we could, ha could have, in many cases, um, accurate uh, estimates of, of each activity, our task in a project, how long it would take. But instead of providing an estimate as a discrete number like this, such as four weeks, it's often helpful to create a three-point estimate. And we do that using uh, what's called the PERT Weighted Average, P-E-R-T, stands for Program Evaluation Review Technique. Now, I'm not going to go into it here because it's the subject of a later lesson, but we use a formula like the one you see here, which in takes into account the optimistic time, OT, the most likely time, which is MLT, and the pessimistic estimate, PT, for an activity. We use this formula then to, cal to calculate a weighted average, and it's very, very useful, particularly when there's a disagreement on the uh, duration of an activity, how long it's going to take, and we can use this formula to give us a weighted average. But as I say, more about this in a later lesson. So let's take a look at a very simple project. And this simple project is I'd like to decorate my apartment. And I've, the first thing I need to do is on the column here on the left-hand side, I have identified the activities uh, for this project. Now I know there's a lot more, but I'm just using these six activities here to illustrate how a project network diagram works. So my activities are, uh, first of all, I need to remove the furniture from my apartment. I've got two rooms, a bedroom and a kitchen, so I want to prepare the bedroom and then paint the bedroom. I also want to do the same for the kitchen, prepare the kitchen, paint the kitchen, and when all of that is done, I want to put my furniture back into my apartment. So I've just got three high, sorry, six high-level activities listed here. And I've also worked out their immediate predecessors. So remove the furniture has no pre uh, predecessor, so I leave that as none, or I could put in a dash or a zero in there. The next activity, which is activity B, prepare the bedroom. Now I can only do that when I have removed the furniture. So therefore, the activity B, prepare bedroom, is dependent on activity A, remove furniture. Then activity C, paint the bedroom. Well, I can only start that when the preparation has been complete. So I put down that activity C, paint bedroom, is dependent on activity B. Now you can see that activity B in turn is dependent on A, but I only put down the preceding immediate predecessor here. So I paint the bedroom, predecessor is activity B. Now prepare the kitchen is dependent on the removed furniture, just the same way as the bedroom was. So I put down A is the immediate predecessor for prepare kitchen, and then I can only paint the kitchen when the preparation is complete. So paint the kitchen uh, is the immediate predecessor is activity D. And once everything is done, then I can put all my furniture back in, and I can only do that when both the bedroom and both the kitchen are painted, and they are activities C and E respectively. You can see on the right-hand side here, I've got the duration in days of each activity. So remove furniture is going to take one day, prepare the bedroom two days, and so on. So let's now plot this out on a project network diagram. 
So my first part here is I'm going to put in the activities. So a network diagram of the project de decorator apartment looks as follows. I've got my uh, previous table up here in the top right hand corner just to keep an eye on it. And you can see I've got my six activities which are represented by six arrows. And using the immediate predecessors I'm able to work out there's activity A, followed by activity B, followed by activity C, and followed by activity F. And another path through this diagram is activity A, followed by activity D, followed by activity E, followed by activity F. And I'm able to do that by following the immediate predecessors on my diagram here and following the step-by-step -step procedure that we looked at previously. So there are two possible paths through this diagram. And then I put in the activity and durations on this so I can see at remove furniture takes one day, um, B, which is prepare bedroom, takes two days, C, which, which is paint the bedroom, takes three days, and so on. So I can add all of these into my diagram here. And what I can then then, you can use this network diagram, we can identify which are the particularly important activities and calculate the duration of the whole project. In my case here, as I've said, I've got two paths through the project. My path A, B, C and F. And there's also a path A, D, E and F. So there's only two possible paths through here. And I'm going to work out then the duration. So I add up the durations of each path. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1. That gives us 7 days for path A, B, C, F. And 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 gives us 5 days for path A, D, E, F. So I can see that the first path here highlighted in red uh, is the path that takes the longest. So it's 7 days. So that's the duration of the project. This is important because this means then that activities A, B, C and F, these are the important activities um, that we must focus on when we are managing a project. These are the ones that we would look if we wanted to reduce the active overall activity of the project, which is currently seven days. If I wanted to reduce that to six days, I'd have to find a way, in particular activities B and C, of reducing them maybe a half a day each or reduce activity C down to two days in order to shorten the project. We can also see in the path A, D, E and F, which is five days, if one of those activities, say activity, either activity D or E, were extended, like let's say there were some problems and activity D, to, instead of taking one day, took two days, we can see that the path would go up to six days, but it would still be less than the critical path. So a project network diagram teaches us to focus on the activities that are on the critical path. And if we are then looking, for example, to improve a process by shortening the duration or making processes work better, that's the path we would look at. I'm sure you can imagine here that if I reduce task E from two days down to one, I would have no effect on the overall duration of the project. It would still be seven days. So in your assignment for this lesson, which will follow, um, this is the information I'm going to give to you. And I'm going to ask you to generate a project network diagram based on these 13 activities. Draw the diagram according to the rules that we've done. So it's a little bit hard. You can see that there's information here indicating that there's going to be bursts and merges. So watch out for that. And once you've drawn the diagram, then add in all the durations which are in days here and identify the critical path. There are several through this particular project, uh, project network diagram. And then once you've got the critical path, calculate the duration of the project. So in summary here, a project network diagram is used to show us the uh, logical relationships and sequence of activities in a project. So that makes it really, really useful for us in our problem solving techniques. The method we've used here is the activity and arrow method uh, to, to draw the diagram. And a critical path in a project is the path which has the longest sequence of activities. So seven in the example that we looked at there. And the critical path teaches us to focus on the activities that make up that path. And finally, a project network diagram is used to estimate the duration of a project. So that's how a project network diagram can be used as a problem solving technique. I hope you found this video useful.